Hi and welcome to Spice and Pans. Today we'll be cooking sweet and sour fish or otherwise known as Tang Tu Yu. So let's start cooking. Now I'll show you how I prepare the fish. First you cut off the fins because it's no use right and it will stick to the pan easily. Now we'll make some slit on the fish so that it will cook evenly. Something like this on an angle. Just cut it down to until you reach the bones. About two finger. Just do the same again. So every two finger you do one slit like this. Alright, after you've done this, we'll crisscross the cut again, right? Same thing, we want it to be like this. So the flesh will be diamond shaped. Okay, so we'll start again. So same thing, two fingers. And we're done with one side. So we'll continue with the other side. The fish I'm using is a red snapper and this is approximately 1.1 kilograms. You can use any fish that you want, be it a garupa, pomfret or even some freshwater fish. No problem at all. After we are done with this, let's just put this aside and prepare the marinating sauce. For the marinade, very simple, we'll have 3 tablespoons of water, 1 teaspoon of salt, put it in, 2 stems of spring onion, utilizing only the white part itself, put it in, a few pieces of young ginger, approximately 5 grams, put it in, mix it up well and squeeze it to get the juices out. This will give the fish a very nice subtle flavor. After you're done with this, we'll just smear this over the fish. Just grab a bunch like this and then just smear it over the fish. Dip it in the water again. So smear this over the fish and let the flavor go in. After you're done with one side, we'll continue with the other side. Flip the fish over and do the same. Finally, put the ginger and the spring onion inside the stomach and we'll let this marinate for approximately 10 minutes. I'll show you how it looks like in a while. 10 minutes is up. We'll remove the spring onion as well as the ginger and we'll coat this with corn flour. So I have with me some corn flour over here. We need to coat this very well with corn flour. Using your left hand, just open up the fish like this and sprinkle the corn flour all over it. Sprinkle liberally. This will help to make the fish crispy and also protect the meat from getting too dry. Right, when you're done with this, just use your left hand and pat the flour down. Now when you're done with this, we just let this rest for one minute before we do the other side because we want the flour to be sticking onto the skin and not dropping off. Now if you don't have corn flour, you can always use sweet potato flour or potato flour, no problem. After one minute, we'll continue to do the other side. Flip it over, same thing. Hold up the fish like this, sprinkle the flour over first. This will also prevent the fish from splattering too much when we shallow fry them. The inside of the fish also, same thing. So put some corn flour and wrap it all around. Okay, once this is done, we'll rest this for approximately two to three minutes and let's go and heat up some oil so that we can shallow fry this. Now I'm heating up the oil. I'm using Shogun by La Gourmet, Sanjo Plus Series 40 cm wok. This is extremely good because it's big enough for you to fry the whole fish. It also has an improved marble non-stick coating with ceramic reinforcement. This work can also be used on induction cooker. For shallow frying, the oil that I need is only to cover half the fish. For deep frying, of course, you need to cover the whole thing. I'm using medium heat right now. In order to check whether the temperature of the oil is good enough or hot enough, we just need to use a bamboo chopstick or a bamboo skewer, put it in the oil. Right, if you see bubbles already rising up like this, that means the oil is hot enough. And we'll put in our fish. Holding the fish by the head and the tail, just slowly put it in like this. And we're going to fry each side for approximately 2 to 3 minutes. We don't move the fish now because we need the crust to form. We need to have the fish head in contact with the oil also. So what we are doing over here is just turn it a little bit. Be very careful when you do this. And the same thing for the tail cut also. As this is a non-stick wok, it is very easy for you to cook dishes like this, especially for fishes. We've been frying the fish for approximately 2 to 3 minutes. Let's just give this a check. We'll need two spatula. All right. You can move the fish very easily now. And as you can see all from here, there's a little bit browning, which is something that what we want. 
and then we just put this down like this. Adjust the fish tail also. We'll do the same with this side of the fish for another two to three minutes. Three minutes is up, let's give this fish a check. I just need to fry a little bit more, I want it to be a little bit more crispy. To make it easier for me to flip the fish, I like to do this because the backbone here is actually a little bit more um, harder or tougher. So it makes the flipping of the fish so much easier. Let's have a look again. Right, look at how beautiful this is. This side is brown enough already as you can see. So we don't fry this side anymore. I just want a little bit more brown on the other side. So I'm just frying the other side for another two minutes or so. So two minutes is up. Let's just remove the fish from the oil. Be very careful. Right, look at how beautiful this is. Place this on a serving plate and later we'll just pour the sauce over the fish. When the work is easier for you to handle, which means that it's not too hot, we'll pour away most of the oil, leaving about two tablespoons of oil behind for us to make the sauce. Turn the heat on to medium low and we'll start to cook our sauce. Put in five grams of ginger chopped. Now don't use too high a heat. We just want the beautiful fragrance to be out. Three cloves of garlic chopped. We can smell the fragrance, we'll add in our tomato sauce. Eight tablespoons of tomato sauce. Just mix them up. If you are using tomato paste, right, you need to fry this for a little while, but tomato ketchup is fine or tomato sauce is fine. Huh? Just heat them up a while. And now we're adding our water, 280 milliliters of water. Put it in. Now we're adding our sugar, two and a half tablespoons of sugar. You have to use a little bit more sugar because this is sweet and sour. It has to have that very nice tangy and sweet taste. Now I'm going to add in my tomatoes, 100 grams of tomatoes, 80 grams of pineapple, and 60 grams of cucumber, all cut into small pieces like this. We also add in approximately half a teaspoon of salt. We let this come to a boil first. Now we can actually turn up the heat to medium high. Just let this boil down for a while. We want to extract the beautiful taste from the tomato as well as the pineapple so that this sauce will not just be sweet and sour but have a very nice fruity taste to it. Just boil this for approximately one to two minutes to get the taste out. Once we have cooked the sauce for one to two minutes, we'll add in our vinegar. Six tablespoons of white vinegar. Now, how sweet or how tangy you want to be is depending on your own self. Let's just give this a taste first. All individual preferences. Wow. For me, this is very beautiful. Now we'll need to thicken the sauce up. I'm using cornstarch solution. Slowly drizzle it in and stir as you do it. It has to be thick, huh, the sauce. If it's too watery, right, your fish will not be crispy anymore. So it has to be really, really thick. Right, something like this. Okay, just stir them around. Using a, the back of a spoon, it must coat super easily like this. And then the sauce is done. Let's turn off the heat and pour the sauce over the fish. And it's time for our lunch. And now the dish is done, let's have a taste. Smells really good. Mm. Crispy on the outside, tender on the inside. The tanginess, the sweetness, to me, this is really good. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like our video, do click like on our video and do subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. See you again and now it's your turn to cook.